Hey, what's going on everyone? Matthew from the right trader.com back today with another daily crypto update. Cryptos are still falling lower and we're now kind of struggling to really get a break above our resistance levels, which means that we will most likely fall a little bit lower in the short term. And that's when we're going to reach some critical support levels that we want to make sure that we bounce at. Now, I'm hopeful that we're going to get a bounce there, and I personally think that that could be a really good buying opportunity. I'm personally going to consider investing at those levels. Once again, that's not financial advice. That's just my opinion. But you have to keep in mind, with the crypto markets, anything is possible. We could fall even lower. However, we need to wait and see how we react to those critical support levels. I'll be mentioning everything during our technical analysis side of things. But over the past 24 hours, a lot of cryptocurrencies down anywhere from 2 to 5%, it seems like. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter for live cryptocurrency market updates. Link to that in the description of this video. With that being said, let's get started with the Bitcoin technical analysis. So Bitcoin is right now still falling lower, pretty steady downtrend actually. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in just a bit more here, extend this downtrend line so you get a better idea of what's going on. And the one good thing currently is that we have a flat candlestick, a little bit of a doji candlestick, which could mean that we might bounce a little bit. But you'll see on other cryptocurrencies, and Bitcoin is also in this basket, we weren't really able to get a, a swift bounce back above, you know, for Bitcoin, for example, back above its uptrend line or even back above $8,000. And that's not to say that's not possible over the next two weeks or so, but it just becomes uh, a bit more unlikely as, you know, the longer we remain above those critical uh, resistance levels, we will most likely move lower down to our critical support levels. And that's what's likely going to happen here, right? At best, we might uh, bounce at $7,000. So hopefully that happens. But there is a pretty high chance at this point that we do end up seeing $6,500. Like I said, uh, the better scenario would be a bounce at $7,000, which is fully possible, and then start moving higher than there, uh, or just flattening out and, and you know consolidating a bit, but not really dropping too much lower. Let's go ahead and take a look at Ethereum. Ethereum, it's a better case scenario it would be getting a bounce at around $530, but once again, it is possible that it reaches its critical support level, which is $500, and that's the level that I really want to avoid dropping below because if we do drop below that, you know, we're going to retest our, our previous low back here, and if we start moving lower than that, then, you know, we could be really kind of set up for more uh, longer term bearish movement, so really want to make sure that we can remain above $500. That's our key support level. We're going to take a look at Litecoin next, see what's happening. Litecoin is actually looking a little bit more decent than Bitcoin and Ethereum in the sense that it actually already is flattening out. And Ethereum, for example, you know, attempted to get back above its um, previous support level. It failed. So it seems pretty likely that we're going to be heading at least towards $500. However, Litecoin actually stabilized at around $110. And now it looks like we're going to be able to remain flat around $120. We're going to come up on this downtrend line. That's what we're going to see. Can we remain in this $120 area? Or are we going to start moving back towards $100? And, you know, near $100, that's where our big support level is. That's where our uptrend line is. And that's really where we need to make sure we get a bounce if we go that low. Let's take a look at Nano. Nano is currently sitting at 55,000 Satoshis. And, you know, it's not really able to get back above it just yet. I think that there's a pretty high likelihood that we test 50,000 Satoshis, which has kind of been a long time coming for Nano uh, since, you know, the drama started and everything. It had some recovery attempts, but the market was just not strong enough to support those attempts. And now I think that we're at least going to test 50,000 Satoshis. We definitely don't want to start moving lower than that, however. Let's take a look at Ripple, see what's going on. So we're going to hop over to the Bitrix chart. And Ripple is actually pretty flat at around 60 cents. We definitely could see a drop to 50 cents if the markets continue to get weaker. However, it's managed to flatten out quite a bit. Same thing with the lower Bollinger Band and the indicators. So there's actually a decent chance that we remain in the 60 cent area and don't move too much lower for now. Let's take a look at our next cryptocurrency, which is going to be, uh, let's see, NEO and take a look at what's going on. NEO is currently also flattening out right around $50. Um, once again, the best case scenario here is that we don't move below $50, uh, avoiding completely a, a move towards $43, and that would also give us a higher low compared to the previous level back here, which would be really good. And basically, hopefully put in a little bit of a base, right, while we flatten out around 
and then start moving higher from there uh, within the next couple of weeks. Indicators also seem to be flattening out uh, as well. Keep in mind, the first time that you test a orange uh, MAC V line crossover, it usually fails like it did back here, for example. It's very common. So you have to keep that in mind uh, with this type of setup, considering that it's, it's going to be the first time that the MACD uh, would test that orange line. Let's go ahead and take a look at our next cryptocurrency, which is going to be Stellar Lumens. And Stellar Lumens is currently, let's see, I'm going to go over to the Binance chart, actually, where I have my previous lines run out. Star Lumens, pretty big red candlestick moving back towards its downtrend line. We might find some support on that, but I think we're going to trickle down lower. Um, you know, at this point, pretty likely that we retest around 3,500 Satoshis, and we don't want to start moving, you know, lower than our 3,400 Satoshi support level. However, indicators not looking too bad. Uh, definitely a recovery attempt here, so we'll have to see, you know, hopefully we're, we're able to remain above some of our support levels here and, and not really get a drop below our important support levels. Let's take a look at Vertcoin, see what's happening. So Vertcoin is currently moving lower, uh, not looking the strongest at all here. It looks like a very high chance of testing a dollar and 54 cents. And keep in mind, Vertcoin is a smaller cryptocurrency now. So smaller cryptocurrencies have much harder time withstanding these market pressures. And there's definitely a chance that we do start moving below a dollar and 54 cents. That is a pretty big support level, so we don't want to see that happen. But it looks like we're at least going to go and test that level over the next week to, to three weeks, I'd say. Let's go ahead and take a look at our next cryptocurrency, which is going to be, let's see, next cryptocurrency is going to be Lisk. And let's see what's happening. So Lisk did end up going back below $10. It's actually holding up fairly well at around $8, which is expected. We do already have a bit of a base there. And now we can see the Bollinger Bands contracting towards the price. Hopefully the indicators will start flattening out, meaning that we might see, you know, uh, just some flattening at around $8 and not really a drop lower down to $6. That's always a possibility. Uh, we also do have some support at around $7. So there are multiple su support levels right now for LISC, which is always good. Let's take a look at Cardano, see what's happening. Cardano is, let's see, I'm going to go to the Bitrix chart where I have my uh, previous lines drawn out, but actually looking pretty decent. We have managed to flatten out. We're struggling to get out of this downtrend, however, but it does look like a possibility. We'll know within the next day or so um, if we're going to be able to break out of this downtrend line. If we do, we'll probably be able to, you know, consolidate a bit and basically trade in the range between 2,500 and 3,000 Satoshis. However, if we continue to remain uh, under this downtrend line, we're going to face a lot of pressure when we reach that 2,500 critical support level, and we may end up falling below that if we're not able to get out of this downtrend line soon enough. So let's go ahead and take a look at our last cryptocurrency of the daily crypto update, which is going to be IOTA. And IOTA is currently falling below $1.47. It's actually maintaining, uh, it's able to hover around that level, but we are now below that support and we could start to see it fall lower. You know, I think that there's a bounce opportunity at around $1.24. Otherwise, we're really going to be heading back to $1.10. Um, Bollinger Bands, Middle Band, all falling uh, sharply lower. Same thing on the indicator. So no real signs of slowing down. Our best, uh, The best thing possible now is you know, that we quickly get back above $1.47. We'll know within the next few days if that's going to happen or if we're going to start moving closer to you know, $1 or $1.10. With that being said, this is the end of this daily crypto update. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.